There we go. See, that's why we work well as a team. All right, so we got this recording now. All right, everybody. So um, this is our first Zoom for Goals into Achievements. We're so excited to have you on. What our um, intention is, is at least once a week to have experts come on and really educate us and give us lots of value to help us on our journey. And as all of us know, not everyone has a health and fitness goal. Some of us have other goals, but as a whole, we're always um, open to learn and grow. And so every mentor that we have on the Zoom will be providing valuable, um, you know, just information for us for our life. So tonight, I want to give you a little bit of background of how David and I met Elise. Um, we're so excited um, to have her on. We met her at a mastermind that we joined a couple years ago. And uh, we met her, uh, gosh, I believe it was spring of this year. And then we got to know her really well um, this last fall. And so we're really excited to have her on. Her uh, passion is gardening and she loves teaching people um, how really it's possible to grow um, no matter where you live. And so um, just listening to her story and how she fell in love with gardening is just such a, a, a wonderful um, you know, story and how it like impacted her life and how she's moved forward using that gift and kind of that memory of growing up with her dad. So with that, you guys all read about her bio. She's well-versed. She's got lots of certifications, very well educated. So I'm not, I'm not going to go down that. You guys can read that. She is an amazing person. She has a beautiful daughter. Um, who's what is she a year and a half now, Lise? She's just a year. Next a week. year, yeah. Mm -hmm. Ad adorable, adorable. So <laughs> anyway, so with that, without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Elise. Take, uh, take off. You got it, girl. All righty. Thank you. All right. So um, I was talking to Stephanie before the um, uh, this all got going, and she was saying how it's funny, we're in a nutrition talk and I'm frying some food. And so I'm actually going to come from a little bit of a different perspective. To me, that's not the worst thing in the world. Um, I, am, I eat healthy. I consider myself to be in a diet, a quote unquote diet. Um, I watch what I eat, but I also eat things that are super high in fat and uh, high in sugar. I'm a sweet tooth girl. I love myself, my ice cream. You know, I think there's the occasions when we go out and we can eat whatever we want and we shouldn't feel guilty about it at all. But that's kind of getting ahead of the story. So um, I just want to ask, and maybe if you can unmute yourself, if you have a response or not, but um, what's your definition of healthy eating? Um, does anybody have a definition for healthy eating or what do you, what does it mean to you? Anybody? So like I'll go ahead and go, go ahead, if no one else yep. is going to go. Yep. Okay. Go ahead. Steph. So this is like the most intriguing thing to me because this is what I want to study, what I'm going back to school for. Um, healthy eating, what I tell people is, um, I, as an athlete, as a competitive athlete, I watch more of my macros, um, and that nothing is bad. Nothing is bad as long as it's in moderation. Okay. Does anybody else have any other, um, views or what, what your definition is? Anybody else want to take a shot? Okay. So, um, what I'll do is, um, so my version of healthy eating, um, that I've come to use as my, my marker as to whether I should go ahead and eat it or not is that, do I feel good afterwards? Um, so it doesn't necessarily mean, um, if it's high in fat or low in fat or anything else, if I feel okay eating it, um, and my body still feels good in the long run and I'm not achy or I'm not sick to my stomach or I'm not feeling like I'm gaining too much weight or holding water, then I'm cool with it. Um, so I'm very liberal in what I eat, but, um, one of the main things that I try to focus on is, um, eating less processed food. And I think that that can kind of be misleading in and of its own thing because we always say, oh, you know, you don't want to eat processed food, but everything is processed. Um, even whole foods is processed. We're cooking it, we're chopping it up, we're processing it. Um, so maybe a better term to use would be refined, um, refined foods that have been um, 
processed a lot. The stuff that doesn't need to be refrigerated or the things that um, can sit around in the cockroaches will eat 100 million years from now when the whole planet's gone and everything's gone. You know, like that kind of stuff, the, maybe the Twinkies that will still be around by that point, those are really, really refined foods. So um, that's what I kind of use as my rule of thumb. Um, so I kind of got started in healthy eating probably seven or eight years ago. Um, when I read a book, it was called 100 Days. Um, I'm going to also post in the group a bunch of reading materials and stuff to, um, if you're interested in anything that I found helpful when I started going through my own journey of what I defined as healthy eating. Um, so anyhow, I read this book and she talked a lot about refined ingredients. And so I did an ask on the group, does anybody have any of the food that they ate today? Does anybody have a package um, from anything they ate today? And if you do, could you raise your hand or share? Okay, go, go for it, Alyssa. Would you mind um, just flipping it over and reading me the ingredients on it and telling us what it is, of course? Yes, yeah, hold, hold on, just one second. Okay. All right, I gotta get my glasses on, hold on. <laughs> uh, all right, ingredients. Um, whey protein concentrate, milk protein concentrate, low heat, non-fat dry milk, um, sunflower oil powder, natural flavors, tapioca maltodextrin, um, mm -hmm. and olive oil powder, flaxseed powder. Okay. So, um, it sounds like maybe a shake or yes. something. Okay. Yeah, a shake. Yep. Okay. So, um, one of the things that did the maltodextrin, you kind of tripped over that. Do you know what that is? Ah, hold on. Let me go back to it. Um, it's tapioca maltodextrin. So maltodextrin is sugar. Okay. Just so it's you know. Tapioca sugar. Yeah. So, um, there's actually, it's, pretty staggering, but there's 61 different um, terms or um, words for sugar in food labels. Um, that just shows you, because they everybody knows like, oh, don't, you're not supposed to eat high fructose corn syrup or whatever. So right. and all of the food companies found that out. They were like, eh, okay, we'll just change it. Food labels can be totally, um, they're meant to confuse. They don't want you to understand what you're necessarily eating. Um, which I think is absolutely mind blowing, but um, 61 different um, terms for sugar. Um, so does anybody else have a label that they wanted to share? Kathy, it looks like you might've brought something. Yep, Kathy's got something. I had to figure out how to turn the, um, the mute <laughs> off. You're good. Okay, so I reach for these things all the time when I'm hungry for just a little snack. Okay, Duke's original. Has pork, sea salt, Parsley, ah, cane sugar, uh -huh. natural flavors, spices, vinegar, roasted garlic, made with beef collagen casein. Okay. Um, so you also had in one of the similar ingredients that was in there. Um, what was it you just ran through? Oh my goodness, I'm brain farting. Can you skim that really fast again? Oh, natural flavors, that's what I was going with. So that's another really misleading term on, on, on the ingredients labels. There's zero, um, zero rules for following. Um, so they can pretty much put anything they want under natural flavoring, flavoring anything at all. Um, and it's just kind of this like, almost like this like secret sauce ingredient that like if they don't want to share their recipe or whatever. So it could be something totally harmless, like a different spice that you may not have mentioned in that label, or it could be something totally awful and chemically related that you don't want to put in your body. And therefore they put natural flavorings, flavoring so that you don't even need to know. Um, so anyhow, um, I found that, that both of you guys had that natural flavoring in there. That's a, a tricky one that they sneak in a lot so that you don't actually know all of the things that you're eating. Um, so what I did when I first started trying to eat healthy was, um, the main thing that I did was I started limiting the ingredients in my food. So I still bought plenty of processed or packaged or, um, refined foods, but I would just kind of use a cutoff point in that, um, scheme of things. And I would say if it had five ingredients or less. Now, there are certain times that I would maybe make an exception for that because sometimes like you just mentioned that um, you had a ton of spices. Now, clearly spices are not like a big deal. So you might have five, six, seven spices on there. 
that's fine. It's not a big deal. But um, if you're kind of using the cutoff point when you're looking at ingredient labels, um, that can kind of give you something to judge by. So yes, it's ideal for us to all spend half the day um, cooking our own food and using all whole um, fresh food and not having anything prepackaged or anything prepared, but that's probably not very realistic for like 99.9% .9 of us. So we're all going to eat those bag of potato chips on occasion. So if we kind of just use those like general rules of thumb when we're searching in the aisles, they can kind of steer us in the right direction. Um, one of the other things um, is that if you have it um, in the, so if, if you picture the grocery store, a lot of times all of this stuff in the middle clearly doesn't need refrigeration, right? It's all of their box stuff that doesn't really need any extra care per se. And when you think about the perimeter, it's all of the stuff that does need um, to be eaten fresh or needs to be frozen or needs to be kept in the fridge. And that's because there's no preservatives. It's another thing that's um, a really easy way to look at things is to stay away from the stuff that doesn't need any sort of refrigeration because it's going to have a lot of extra crap in there that you may or may not need and want in your body. Um, so it's eliminating those preservatives. So you can find a lot of the stuff that's in the middle on the outskirts as well. You just might need to take a little bit of extra care by throwing it in the fridge or bringing a cooler for you with lunch. Um, so like if you think about it, like the kids packs have like those like go -Gurts or whatever. No, they don't need refrigeration, but you could just as easily go to the dairy section and get your yogurt from there and it's gonna not have quite as many of those preservatives in it. Um, so that's an easy way to kind of eliminate some of the garbage in your body that you don't necessarily want or need. Um, so let's see, um, I found, um, something that was a little interesting and, uh, she's actually sitting here with me, which is funny, but, um, we all want to eat healthy, um, and we all want to make changes in our lives, or at least it sounds like we do. Um, but sometimes it can be hard to stick with long-term or to quote unquote sacrifice, um, to get yourself there. And me and my husband have been eating a, what most people would consider a really strict diet. Um, and I don't think it's for everybody. It's just kind of, you know, I use that marker of how I feel and um, how, I want, how I want to live my life and how I want to feel. And I feel really good eating this way. So I've continued to do it. Um, and I, I, my mom's been having arthritis problems and her joints were always so swollen. And I kept telling her, you know, mom, I really think this diet could help. And it's supposed to be great for inflammation, great for joints. Yes, there are some things that you might not be able to eat, but I think that in the long term, you'd feel better for it. And I just remember one of those times where I'd casually mentioned it, she was, and I, 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 I got frustrated. I said, mom, are you really willing to live in pain for the rest of your life just because you don't want to give up tomatoes or whatever it was? And she goes, maybe I am. And she came around and um, she's actually been on the diet now, I think five or six months-ish. And her swelling in her joints has already gone down and she feels so good on the diet. And it just, it showed me that now she's totally committed to it too. And she knows that it can make her feel better by what she eats. So I think that we need to all find that, that thing for us that makes us feel better and that's when you're willing to stick to something and commit to it. If you're doing it because you're supposed to do it or because you want to lose weight and so it's supposed to be this diet thing and you're not really feeling those results, then I feel like it's something that's not going to stick with you long term. But when you find something that makes you feel vibrant and healthy and energetic and alive and you look good in your body and you feel good in your skin, that's something that's going to stay with you. And that's going to be different for everybody. And I think that there's a lot of different diets out there that can make you feel that way. So it's finding whatever fits for you. But um, some of the books that I'm going to post are just kind of starting points. They're not necessarily um, the one thing that's going to help you succeed or fail. And I also think it's interesting because um, some people, um, Stephanie's definition of healthy was talking about macros and focusing on um, a different aspect that most of us wouldn't think of. So a lot of us might cut out sugar or we might count calories. And all of those things can lead you to feeling good in your own body. So it's finding whatever fits for you. Um, I'm a huge proponent of that. 
So um, I can run through um, some different ideas on what to look for in like dairy, eggs, sugar, seafood, cooking oils, um, beef, that kind of thing, if that would be helpful for people. But if anybody has questions, um, I'd also like, I can answer questions now. Um, and then also I can talk about different ways to make eating healthy affordable, which is a huge thing for me. Um, we decided when I had my baby to go, um, I wanted to go as a stay-at-home mom. So that was a definite drastic cut to our income. And we still eat an incredibly, incredibly healthy diet and um, we're able to do it for not very much. So it doesn't have to be expensive to eat healthy. Um, so I can definitely hit on any of that, Alyssa, if you want to... Um, yeah, I think or we can talk about any of that. Yeah, I think um, what I would love to do. So those two subject matters are amazing. And I think bringing you back on to kind of expand. So maybe like an overview, because I did tell everybody this would be about half hour long. It is recorded so that in case anybody needs to hop off, no problem. Um, but I, I would love to ask you the question because I think everyone on the line has had um, a version of healthy in their lifestyle in, in their life before. Um, as they're re kind of finding themselves again and their, their new version of the fit self. When you went through this, um, this discovery, how long do you think it took you? Cause you, I, I've talked to you a lot about this, but share with everybody. Like, I know you read a lot and you kind of tried this and you tried that. So mm -hmm. like you said, you found what worked for you. Mm -hmm. Um, how long did it take you to kind of get to this place where you're living now the way that you are? Yeah, so um, I, honestly, it probably like made like a slightly concerted effort maybe seven years ago. Um, and it's literally been this slow iteration of like evolving and growing and learning and being like, oh my gosh, got to do this or I, I don't feel right about doing this anymore. Um, so in the beginning, um, I tried to do, I was stubborn and I didn't want to fully clean out my pantry. So I learned all this information. I was like, okay, from now on, I'm just not going to buy any more food that matches this idea and this concept that I've learned. But then I kept like, you know, falling back on like my huge, uh, cause I was a coupon person. So I had like backstock of like all this stuff. And finally one day I was like, Oh my gosh, I'm still cooking like crap, even though I know it's not what I need. So I ended up my thing that finally kickstarted it and really made me commit to the concept was purging my kitchen and pantry of all the crap that I shouldn't or didn't want to have anymore. And um, so I've kind of evolved over the seven years, um, uh, changing different things as I learned. Um, but I will say that um, even doing this in what most people would consider a very strict diet, um, you know, I follow that in the home, but I still enjoy myself when I go out. If I'm at a conference or if I'm going over to my family or friend's house, I enjoy myself and I eat what I eat and um, I, you know, I just, it's, it's good I, because I'm eating, you know, 90% of my meals healthy into my diet. Um, I don't, I don't really feel the effects of eating one bad meal here and there. Right. You know? Well, what I love about you sharing that is Felicia, Felicia, can you mute out? Um, what I love um, about hearing what you said is that a lot of us are on this journey that we want it to be collapsed in a short amount of time. And we probably will be very successful with some of the programs that we've picked, mm -hmm. but it's the long-term transition. So like the gateway of getting there and then transitioning for the long-term mm -hmm. lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, so like me personally, I've chosen isogenics and I do believe that I will have isogenics within my diet long-term because I, I, you know, I went to the actual headquarters and met scientists behind all this stuff. So I do believe that I probably will keep some of that in my diet, but I don't see myself long-term trading out two meals for two shakes, you know, but the transition is important. Mm -hmm. Now, what I love about what you shared with everybody is that you're still seven years and you're still going, you know, oh, you're still, mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's important um, for everybody to know, especially in this day and age where we want that quick fix, you know, yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm a, I'm a firm believer in education and, um, I'm a, I listen to my podcasts and I'm a reader. I, I read a lot and nothing is ever going to be perfect. Science is always advancing. There's always yeah. new concepts and, um, you're never going to know it all. So as long as you don't, if you don't find one thing and stick with it, I feel 
if you're not constantly learning or trying to learn new things, even if you think you have it down, then um, you're probably going to hit a roadblock uh, yeah. and have to yeah. jump, jump start again. So yeah. I just, I constantly learn. And if you're constantly willing to change and adapt, then I feel like that's the long-term success that you're talking about. Great. So I think for the last few minutes, if you could give us an overview of the healthy eating, um, you know, the, the low kind of um, financial barrier, if you will, give some tips on that, that and we can then open it up for questions. And then okay. if they want the labeling um, stuff that you have to go over, that's great too. And we could also bring you on to another Zoom so you can kind of expand that. Okay, so um, one of the first things that um, I started doing is you can certainly shop, I think the easiest way, or and it can be a little bit misconceiving, but like if you go to your natural grocers, um, so I know that Whole Foods sounds great, but there's a lot of sneaky stuff in there. <laughs> um, so just because it's one of those um, big fancy stores doesn't necessarily mean what they're offering you is the best quality, but um, they do have a lot larger organic selection a lot of times. Aldi's is actually supposed to be a really good one. Um, we don't have one that's very convenient for me, um, but I've heard from people that they have a large organic selection. Um, and organic's not the end-all be-all. Ideally, you're actually going to be looking for fresh local food. Um, the nutrient um, value in that food is way, way, way higher than what you would get when it's coming from Chile or California. Well, I guess you guys, a lot of you guys live in California, so maybe a little different, but um, for me, that's going to be 10 to 14 days minimum down the road um, for that produce. But anyhow, um, finding uh, fresh local food, um, and the easiest way to do that is a farmer's market. Um, they're everywhere now, everywhere. Um, I'll do um, a link as well um, that has, it's, um, it helps you find um, farmer's markets, co-ops, um, I don't know if you're familiar with it, what a cooperative is. A food cooperative is where you can buy bulk produce um, in a group and then you get discounted rates. It's a great way to save money. When I finally found our local food co-op here, that's when I really started to save money. And you can find products that are hard to find everywhere else, like raw dairy, grass-fed beef a lot of times. But anyhow, this website has links for finding the um, ones nearest to you. So you type in your zip code or your city, and it'll help you find um, – local grocers, farmers markets, that kind of thing. Um, I will also say one of the main, uh, another big fat factor that I found was um, Thrive Market. And it's a non-perishable products you order online, super convenient, and it's all health food oriented um, and environmentally friendly, sustainably packaged, that kind of thing. Um, so you can get everything on there, canned goods, toilet paper, the whole shebang. So basically how I choose to shop is at my co-op, um, fresh food, I get my non -per or my non perishables on Thrive, and then uh, my my job, my career uh, that I do is gardening. So I grow some of my own food. That is certainly not for everybody, but I am a firm believer that you can grow food if you want to. Um, and it doesn't have to be a lot. It's completely unrealistic to think that you're going to be able to grow all of your own food. It's never going to happen. I do it pretty hardcore for most people and I'm not even close to that. Um, but even adding in just a little bit, having fresh herbs, having some lettuce, um, lettuce or salad greens or radishes to throw in to the salad or roast in the oven is a great way to do it. So anyhow, that's a very affordable way to eat healthy as well. Awesome. Awesome. So I've got a comment from Barbara Ann. She said, I went to Trader Joe's for the first time today. It was very cool. Love the pre-chopped up uh, veggies. So mm -hmm. that, that's a good tip too, right? Like mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I find helpful is don't cause yourself to have work because when you get it into your kitchen and you realize, oh my gosh, now I have to spend time doing whatever it is, X, Y, Z, you will go for something on the quick, you know? So exactly. that's going to be quick. Yeah. And another um, really cool thing too that most people always think is it has to be fresh, especially with the veggies and everything. Um, when they're shipped and sitting there for a long time, they're not very nutritionally healthy anyhow for you. Um, frozen section is awesome for veggies because they're frozen when they're freshly picked and it's usually in season when then there's a huge abundance of crop and they're not having to ship it all over the place. So frozen veggies, the pre-chopped bags and all of that, that's a great way to go. That makes meals nice and easy to prep and um, a lot less time consuming. And then that way, if you forget or whatever, it's in the freezer, you don't have to go back out to the stores. So that's the and they're more cost effective as well, the frozen. Yeah. Yep. yeah. 
I love that. Okay, guys, so I'm going to have each of you guys um, take off your phones off mute. If you have anything to add before we wrap up, um, please feel free to ask any questions. Elise is really, <laughs> really wanting to hear from you guys. Okay, Janine unmuted. Do you have um, anything, Janine, to add? Um, no, I, I don't. I think what she covered tonight was really helpful and a lot of I was pre-thinking things that she was saying because um, as a family and the pantry's full of junk, we go for the easy, quick stuff. Yeah. And being an hour out of town, um, I usually go, this sounds horrible, but I usually go like once a month to Costco. Mm -hmm. And I do, I have a lot of pro frozen vegetables and that kind of stuff, but we find ourselves picking at the things that um, we probably shouldn't be picking at because they're, they're easy and they're convenient and they're right there. And we're, we're not, I wouldn't say a busy family, but we're very sporadic. So I don't know how many people are going to be showing up at the door. Sometimes I have six people sitting at my table and sometimes I have three, you know? Um, so it's kind of hard to predict. And so, um, you know, with this, this plan, I like this plan because it's telling me, Hey, you're going to do this. And I'm like, okay, I can do that. But if I don't have a guideline, you'll catch me wandering and yeah. doing things that I shouldn't do. Yeah, that's some um, two really important things that you hit on there. I think one, meal planning is critical to any sort of healthy eating success, um, bar none. Uh, if you don't know what you're going to be cooking, no one is going to go to the grocery store when they're already hungry and it's seven o'clock at night and you still have to walk the dog and wake up for network the next morning. It's just not going to happen. So taking that little bit of time to pre-plan is huge. And also yeah. I think that just knowing um, a lot of times you can still have quick, easy snacks or um, meal prep foods, whatever the case is, without necessarily having to cheat. It's just learning those things that might be a little bit healthier versus less healthy for you. So like, I'm sorry, laundry room. Um, but anyhow, my pantry really fast, but like, I still have things like chips, but it's three ingredients and it's made out of almond meal flour instead of corn. Um, and they don't use um, corn oil to fry them in. It's coconut oil. So like it's, you know, if I need a quick snack or whatever, it's healthier option. So it's kind of just like learning those options and not necessarily cutting yourself off. So yes, I eat tons of nuts and everything like that. It's a healthy snack, but things that people wouldn't necessarily think of, crackers, you know? So you can definitely still have your like junk food if you just... Um, take a little bit of a learning curve and get to know the products and having different options available um, and knowing that just because it's a bag of chips doesn't mean it's necessarily the worst thing in the world for you. Awesome. Janine, do you have anything else to add? Are you, Janine, you're good. We can't hear you if you're talking. Okay. I see Barbara Ann has her um, mic off as well. Barbara Ann, did you have a question? Yeah, there, this is, um, the per timing is perfect. You know, things were gathered together. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Am I talking to myself? No. <laughs> um, so just thank you. It's, uh, I'm learning all the time. I, I have a nutrition lady that I met with this week, and she's really proud of that I'm taking everything very seriously. So I did, I went through my pantry and took a, a see-through tub full of stuff that I don't want to see mm -hmm. and put it in the, a faraway closet that mm -hmm. I'm going to give away or people, other people will look in there if they're looking for something <laughs> that I don't want to see anymore. So I kind of, I, I think we're all, I'm on this page. So thank you. Awesome. Oh, glad to hear. Awesome. That's great. Um, Steph or Paige, either of you guys have anything to add? You good, Steph? How about you, Paige? Go ahead, Paige. We can't hear you if you're talking. Technical difficulty. <laughs> All right, guys, so Felicia hopped off um, and she said, this was great, had to drop off, um, learning a lot of cool stuff in this short amount of time. Thank you so much. So um, Paige, if you're trying to ask a question, you can type it in the message or um, get off mute. It looks like you are trying to, so I don't wanna hop off without answering your question if you have anything to add. 
or a question. All right. Okay, guys. Well, we're going to wrap for the night. We're so excited to have had our first Zoom with our experts, Elise Pickett, mm -hmm. and she actually is out of Florida. So it's three hours ahead of time. So I just want to thank you for staying up late with us um, <laughs> a little bit later <laughs> for you than us and um, appreciate all the value you brought to this tribe and to this group. And um, so, so grateful to have you. And guys, as you can tell, as you can tell, she's so well versed in so many things. Just um, anytime you want to learn a little bit more, um, you know, just just add it to the group and and just um, ask me if you know, hey, can Elise talk about this or this subject matter? And we'll bring her on again for another Zoom. Uh, but for everybody's time and just being um, protective of everybody's valuable time and appreciation, I'm going to end the Zoom now. So thank you so much, Elise. If you guys want to hop off Thanks and give her a big guys. thank you, that would be great. Thank Thanks so you. much, Elise. All right. Have a good one. All right. Bye, guys.